The following film was made in 1982 during early stages of construction of the Adelaide Obar. A small section of test track was in use and the film explained some of the planning principles that developed the Adelaide busway. Adelaide, the capital city of Australia's fourth largest state, serves a population of almost one million people. Bounded to the west by a sheltered gulf and to the east by a range of low hills, it's typically a linear metropolis. From north to south, suburban Adelaide spreads some 63 kilometres and it's approximately 23 kilometres wide. The central business district is about 1.6 kilometres square and is situated roughly at the midpoint. On this flat plain, Adelaide people enjoy a high standard of living similar to other industrialised Western societies. The climate is typically Mediterranean. Metropolitan Adelaide is serviced for the most part by a modern fleet of 744 buses, comprising mainly Volvos and, to a lesser extent, MAN and AEC Swift vehicles. A heavy rail system based on a fleet of 160 rail cars services some suburbs, although the rail network is not as fully developed as it is in other major Australian cities. A tram network was progressively phased out earlier this century, although one line, occupying an exclusive right-of-way, still remains and services a small portion of Adelaide's southwestern and seaside suburbs. Generally, however, the majority of South Australians rely on their cars for personal transport, and while modern traffic management techniques within the existing road network have acted to relieve congestion in many areas, the growth of outer dormitory suburbs has caused increasing problems. To the south, an existing heavy rail transport corridor was upgraded and extended in the 1970s, while a similar heavy rail corridor existed to the north. To the growing northeastern area, however, no developed corridor existed. Traditionally, the expanding northeastern suburbs have been serviced by the bus fleet, which by necessity shared the road network with other users. In the 1970s, with trip times to the northeast extending beyond an hour on many routes, the South Australian government ordered an urgent review of public transport options to serve northeastern suburbs. Fortunately, transport planners had one important advantage. Earlier development plans had made provision for a transport corridor which had, over the years, been added to by land purchases and acquisitions. The corridor followed the course of the only major river to cross the Adelaide Plains, the River Torrens. After exhaustive studies over a five-year period to 1978, a short list of transport alternatives for use within the corridor were released for public comment. The list included building a freeway, installing a light rail or tram service, installing a heavy rail or train service, or building some form of busway system. In 1979, after further technical feasibility studies and public debate, the state government announced that it would proceed with the construction of the light rail system. But by then, costs had risen dramatically. The Director General of Transport in South Australia, Dr Derek Scrafton. By 1979, when we had finished the design of the LRT, of the Light Rapid System, we found that the cost was 130 million US dollars. And that cost was more than we could justify in terms of the, the state budget of what we felt the community could spend on a, on a public transport system. The solution was to find a system which provided all the safety and riding comfort of a rail system, but at a cost the community could afford. The options were again examined, and following further detailed studies, the government decided to proceed with a busway. But unlike conventional busway designs, 
the South Australians opted for the unique Oban design developed by Mercedes-Benz and Zublin of West Germany. The system, which offers all the benefits of heavy rail technologies, but at a considerably cheaper cost, is comprised of a concrete track on which automatically guided buses can speed people in complete safety and comfort to and from the city at speeds of up to 100 kilometers an hour. The guideway system is unique in that buses are guided onto the precast concrete rails and held rigidly on course there by small wheels attached to the bus's front wheel stub axles. Work began on the guided busway in 1982. 12 kilometres in length, the busway connects the regional centre of the system's catchment area to the central business district and is being built in two stages. Stage one, the inner or city end, is about seven kilometres long. Stage two, the outer end, is five kilometres long. When completed, the busway will provide a fast grade separated corridor for 12 bus routes, which now operate a conventional service on the ordinary road network. Stage one has included the construction of overbridges, pedestrian overpasses, two to four span river bridges, one 59 meter tunnel, and the laying of the concrete track. To December 1984, about four kilometers of track had been laid, and as work proceeds, this track is being used for testing purposes and in the training of drivers. Construction and earthworks on the remaining three kilometers of stage one is well advanced and includes further overbridges, pedestrian overpasses, river bridges, and the construction of two of the three stations to be positioned along the busway's route. One station is to be established roughly at the midpoint to enable some routes to enter the system, while another is being established closer to the city to serve local needs and to connect to a cross-suburban bus route. The third station will be established where the busway terminates at the outer end. Bus services will be commissioned on the seven kilometres of stage one by the beginning of 1986, while construction of the remaining five kilometres is scheduled for completion in 1988. The track itself is constructed to a high standard with tight tolerances. The L-shaped track elements, some 12 metres in length, are firmly secured to concrete sleepers by metal clips, in a similar way to which railway track is secured. The concrete sleepers, about four metres apart, rest on concrete piers, sunk to a depth determined by soil conditions. For drainage reasons and to reduce overall initial cost and ongoing maintenance charges, the concrete track has been left exposed. A total of 90 Mercedes-Benz buses, 50 of them articulated models, are being built to service the guideway. The new buses include for the first time an anti-lock braking system, 100 km per hour capability and large electronic route destination signs. While each bus comes equipped with a front stub axle guide wheel, no other construction difference separates the guideway buses from regular buses. The dual mode nature of the system allows buses to operate on ordinary roads and streets in the catchment area collecting passengers at curbside stops. On completion of these parts of the route, all buses will enter the busway track at a station and proceed directly to the city centre. Entry to the concrete guideway is simply achieved at speeds of up to 40 kilometres per hour by driving the bus through a tapering funnel length of guide rail. Once the driver has entered the concrete track, the guide wheels hold the bus rigidly on course. The driver takes his hands off the steering wheel and accelerates to an operating maximum speed of 100 kilometers per hour. It's important to note here that safety was of paramount importance to the South Australians and the developers of the system. The system has been subjected to and has passed the toughest safety checks. Fully instrumented test buses have confirmed the highest levels of stability and operational safety 
at the design speed of 100 kilometers per hour, both under normal and abnormal conditions. Extremes of adjustment of the guide roller, braking systems, shock absorbers and air suspension, plus the simulation of multiple system failures, have all been tested under the most unfavorable conditions without jeopardy to the system. Tire failure, including blowouts at full speed, plus panic stops under both wet and dry conditions, have demonstrated the system's inherent stability. We've been running buses up and down the, the track for some 15 months. And up to now, we found nothing at all wrong with the key interface between the track and the vehicle. And everything about the system has lived up to our expectations. The Adelaide guided busway system is being developed at a total cost of about $78 million US. Of that, 18 US million dollars is being spent on the fleet of buses and $3 million US on landscaping the corridor. Under the management of a special project team, the project is being brought in on budget and on schedule. Bus services will be commissioned on stage one by the beginning of 1986, while construction of the remaining five kilometers of busway is scheduled for completion in 1988. When completed, the project will be the largest operational guided busway system incorporating OBAN technology in the world. Transport planners or operators considering a similar project are invited to inspect the system and to avail themselves of South Australia's experience in constructing the busway. Contact with the South Australian busway team can be made through Australian Trade Commissions or by writing direct to Northeast Busway Project, State Administration Centre, Victoria Square, Adelaide, 5000, South Australia. The Guided Busway. Safe, reliable, efficient and economic. In Adelaide, South Australia, public transport technology for tomorrow is being built today.